Well, turn with me to the Word of God in 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, 2 Chronicles 7. And the scripture reading for this morning is taken from verse 11 to 22. 2 Chronicles 7, 11 to 22. And this is what we read in the Word of God. Solomon completed the built completed building the temple of God and the royal palace. The projects he had set his heart on doing. Everything was done. Success. Satisfaction. God appeared to Solomon that very night and said, I accept your prayers. Yes, I have chosen this place as a temple for sacrifice. A house of worship. If I ever shut off the supply of rain from the skies or or order the locusts to eat the crops or send a plague on my people, my people, my God-defined people, respond by humbling themselves, praying, seeking my presence, and turning their backs on their wicked ways, I will be there ready for them. I'll listen from heaven, forgive their sins, and restore their land to health. From now on, I am alert day and night to the prayers offered in this place. Believe me, I have chosen and sanctified this temple that you have built. My name is stamped on it forever. My eyes are on it, and my heart is in it always. As for you, if you live in my presence, as your father David lived, pure in heart and in action, living the life I set out for you, attentively obedient to my guidance and judgments, then... I'll back my kingly rule over Israel. Make it a sure thing on a sure foundation. The same covenant guarantee I gave to David, your father, I'm giving to you. Namely, you can count always on having a descendant on Israel's throne. But if you or your sons betray me, Ignore my guidance and judgments. Taking up with alien gods by serving and worshiping them. Then the guarantee is off. I'll wipe Israel off the map. And repudiate this temple. I've just sanctified to to honor my name. And Israel will be nothing but a bad joke among the peoples of the world. And this temple, splendid as it is now, will become an object of contempt. Tourists will shake their heads saying, what happened here? What's the story behind these ruins? Then they'll be told. The people who used to live here betrayed their God, the very God who rescued their ancestors from Egypt. They took up with alien gods, worshiping and serving them. That is what's behind this God-visited destruction. God appeared to Solomon that very night and said, I accept your prayers. I have chosen this place as a place of sacrifice, a house of worship. Last Sunday, we had uh, Pastor Barry shared with us from from the word, from the book of Habakkuk, and spoke about revival. Habakkuk is one of the minor prophets. 
And in my own personal devotions, I'm currently in the fourth of the major prophets. And for those of you who don't know minor or major prophets, uh, the fourth major prophet is Ezekiel. The major prophets of the Old Testament are Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, and Daniel. What has really struck me about the prevailing messages of almost all the prophets is warnings. Warnings. God warns believers and unbelievers alike. He clearly condemns the sins of the world. But in particular, he condemns the sins of his own people, Israel. Actually, for those of you who don't know how messages are, are prepared as uh, we bring, try to bring the word of God uh, to you on a weekly basis, um, I was actually in the middle of preparing a message from one of the other minor prophets, uh, Joel, chapter 2. But God changed things up, and he had something else for us today. Many of you, of you know and are aware that Sunday mornings at 9.30, we meet in the lounge for a time of prayer before the worship service. We are together seeking God's face and his will for WBC, for Willowdale Baptist Church, for Willowdale as a community, and our future. We are specifically asking God for a revival. But what actually is a revival? And is there any difference between a revival and an awakening? Rather simply stated, the biggest difference between these two terms is that revival applies to the church, to professing believers in Jesus Christ. An awakening, on the other hand, applies to the lost, to those who do not know Jesus as Lord and Savior yet. I believe that both a revival and an awakening can occur simultaneously. And both are desperately needed today. But I also believe that revival needs to come first. And what do I mean by that? The reason I'm saying that is that the church, professing believers in Jesus Christ, have been entrusted with the gospel. The message of salvation in Jesus Christ alone. So what's wrong with this picture? We as believers, I think, we're too busy. We're asleep. Or just plain indifferent to the plight of the lost around us. The whole world is perishing. And we're just sitting by and watching. Father, forgive me. Forgive us. Jesus, renew a right spirit in us. Renew a spirit within me, within us, so that we become passionate worshipers and servants of you. Only then will we delight in going out from here and sharing the love of Jesus with those who don't know him yet. Please revive us again. As I looked into this a little bit, I found that in past revivals, they usually follow a period of time of moral decline, spiritual apathy. But revivals are always preceded by intense Repentant prayer. They often last for days or weeks, or even years. 
and unusual efforts are made to reach the unconverted, those that don't know Jesus yet. People sense the presence of God powerfully. Conviction comes. Despair. Contrition. Repentance. And prayer comes easily. People thirst for the word of God. Many authentic conversions occur and backsliders are renewed. So turn with me again to his word, his message. Turn with me again to 2 Chronicles. And this is what we read. When Solomon had finished the temple of the Lord in the royal palace and had succeeded in carrying out all that he had in mind to do in the temple of the Lord and in his own palace, the Lord appeared to him at night and said, I have heard your prayer and have chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifices. It is my conviction that God has chosen this specific place at Young and Finch for Willowdale Baptist Church to be a lighthouse to the nations. We are soon going to celebrate a hundred years, a hundred years of testimony and proclamation of the gospel from this church. I believe that God has new plans on how to reach this generation with the good news of Jesus Christ. Join us in your private prayers, but also in the corporate prayers as we gather together on Sunday mornings where we're asking, we're pleading with God, seeking to hear his plans and purposes, and then obeying God in what he wants to accomplish. When I shut up the heavens and there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague among my people, Notice that in this verse, it's when, not if. We are not to be surprised when these things happen because God is warning us. He's saying that these things will happen. If you listen to the news, do you hear more and more each day when you're on TV, hear the, hear the, the news. Heat waves, like in Europe, Portugal and Spain, and in many places. Or drought in numerous places. Or flooding in others. Terrible catastrophes that are going on in many places. Would or could we classify COVID as a plague? It's impacting the entire world. Well, regardless, God is trying to get our attention. And he's trying to get the attention of the whole world. Verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. God is giving us clear instructions. Yes, to us as his people. Are you proud to be called by his name? The name that is above every name. 
as followers of Jesus, we are to humble ourselves and to pray. Oh, how I need to become humble and pray more. How about you? Remember what our vision here is here at WBC? <laughs> I wish it would keep going. Prayer on whose mission? God's mission. Loving the community. I wish everybody would be able to say that. And not only say it, live it. By prayer on God's mission, loving the community. Are we truly seeking God's face? If we are, then his spirit usually convicts us of our sinful ways. That actually is the job of the Holy Spirit, i.e. to convict us of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. When he points out some sin in my life, in your life, he expects me, he expects you to confess it and then repent of it. If we do respond to his conviction, then he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to purify us of all unrighteousness. If we do these things, if we respond to him, he says, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive your sins and will heal their land. Do you see or do you notice that this is a conditional clause? If we humble ourselves, if we pray, if we seek God's face, if we turn from our sinful ways, then, only then, God will heal, hear, he will forgive, and he will heal our land. Let us pause for a minute and pray silence, in silence, asking God to reveal any sin in our lives that need to be confessed and repented of. God is giving us an opportunity to be renewed by him. So we're going to stop. You talk with him. He wants to talk with you.
continue this afterwards. Share with someone who, share with someone what God has said to you. In verse 15, he says, Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. I believe that God just listened to our prayers. He wants to do some amazing things through you and through me here at Willowdale. But it's conditional on our obedience to him by prayer on God's mission, not our mission or the things we want, on God's mission, loving the community. As for you, if you walk before me faithfully, as David your father did, and do all I command, and observe my decrees and laws, I will establish your royal throne. As I covenanted with David your father, when I said, you shall never fail to have a successor to rule over Israel. I mentioned earlier that Willowdale Baptist Church is approaching a hundred years of witness to the only Savior, Jesus Christ. There have been faithful, godly men and women who have been raised up in this place and have been sent forth to the far corners of the earth to share the gospel. Braun. Braun Hewitt went to Brazil for 41 years to do exactly that. Kareem and Rita, they'll be here with us actually next week, went to Lebanon. I think it's about 10 years that they've been uh, serving there. Dali and I had the privilege of representing you as we served with Greater Europe Mission for 26 years in Portugal. During that period of time away, Canada has become a mission field. Here in Toronto, the last census stated that more than 50% of the population of Toronto are foreign born. They're not from here. Just look around and see that the nations are, have come here to Canada, and in particular, Toronto. We need to reach each and every one of them, regardless of where they're coming from. But, if you turn away and forsake the decrees and commands that I have given you, and go off and serve other gods and worship them, then I will uproot Israel from my land, which I have given them, and will reject this temple. I have consecrated for my name. We live in different times now. What was good is now considered bad. What was considered bad is now thought to be good. Have we, as God's people, not forsaken his word? His truth? Have we not bought in into the idea serving the gods of our day? Peace and prosperity, fame and fortune. Today, we cannot remain fi fixed or transfixed upon the past. The good old days 
When we here at Willowdale Baptist Church were one of the largest and most influential churches in the fellowship, in the, the denomination, Toronto has changed. Willowdale has changed. Even Willowdale Baptist Church has changed. But the gospel remains the same. Jesus alone brings peace, brings order, brings righteousness, and ultimately salvation. And he wants to bring it to this generation. God warns us, if we do not reach this generation, what will happen? I will make it a byword, an object of ridicule among all peoples. This temple will become a heap of rubble. All who pass by will be appalled and say, why has the Lord done such a thing to this land, to this temple? As we went out loving the community, a third part of our vision, one gentleman said to us, hey, you guys know, there used to be a church right there across the street. I looked. All I saw was townhouses. And then I thought back. And I could remember there was a church. Unfortunately, it no longer exists as far as I know. None of us want to be forgotten. But if we forsake the Lord, then we may become a heap of rubble. So why would such a thing occur? People will answer. Because they have forsaken the Lord, the God of their ancestors, who brought them out of Egypt and have embraced other gods, worshiping and serving them. This is why he has brought all this disaster on them. Some of you know, know me better than others. One of my prayers at this stage of my life is that I may finish well. What I mean by that is whatever transpires, I want to remain faithful to God who saved me from my sinful ways. I don't know how many more years of life God has allotted to me, but I do not want to forsake my Savior. I want to be busy sharing the living truth, the hope, the life that is found in Jesus Christ alone. God is the one who will accomplish this. As he states in his word in John 6, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. God is doing it. But he has sent you and me out. He has entrusted us with the message. The message of salvation, the message of hope, of eternal life, of forgiveness of sins. Are we willing to go and proclaim him? So what is God saying to us today? We, as his children, need him to revive us. Revive us again. We need to seek him first and foremost. 
and he will show us what he wants to accomplish through us in this generation by prayer on God's mission, loving the community. He alone can revive our souls, our spirits. But we do need to ask him. Ask him to refresh us, to renew us. So join me in committing to pray for our own spiritual vigor, for the spiritual vigor of everyone who congregates here at Willowdale Baptist Church and join us online as well. To pray for the future that God has in store for each of us individually, as our families, but as a community that meets here at Young and Finch. May we confess our sins, receive his forgiveness, and then go out loving the community and share this wonderful news with everyone that we meet. You will be surprised at what he can accomplish through you if you're willing. This week, a few of us went out doing exactly that. And I asked Nancy to come now and share just what happened, how people are responding to his word as we go out loving the community. Thank you, Pastor John. So, um, last year, during the third lockdown, Pastor John invited me to join uh, the Discovery Bible Studies. And I did it. Um, it was great for me because I read the Bible as a book, as a whole book, in two and a half months. And then, through DBS, I had the opportunity to go into the Bible at a much uh, slower piece and much deeper level, and I read it. We started, we are doing it every single Tuesday night. So this year, we were reading Ephesians, and Ephesians has a beautiful passage that says, talks about the armor of God. Put on the armor of God, right? And I was talking to my Lord and I said, okay, Lord, I've been doing DBS for a year. What's next for me to do, right? And I mean, some of you know that I work for a clothing store, one of the luxurious places, stores in Toronto. I dress men for living, right? I, I built uh, wardrobes, clothing for work, for vacation, out of wear, active wear, everything concerning to wardrobe, I do that. And then I read Ephesians 6 and talks about the whole armor of God, the helmet of salvation, the, the shield, the, the shoes of the peace, everything, right? And this idea come, like God is talking to me. I said, all right, I'm getting it. With my hands, I can work in the flesh, right? I can, I can dress a man in the flesh, and I can do it as well in the spirit. 
helping men to put on that armor of God, right? And be ready to fight forces of evil in this every day that we live in, right? In this broken world. When that was happening, I came to the church, I came to service. And somebody, his name is Matthew. Matthew came up here and he talked about the three circles as a format how to approach the community and how to spread the gospel. And that was so inspiring to me. I said, yes, that is a very good idea. And I could put it in practice, right? So all of this is happening and a new person joined Discovery Bible Studies. His name is Chris, Chris O'Connor. And Chris invited me to a meeting. And at that meeting, uh, along with Pastor Ron and Matthew and others, we talked about the three circles. And Chris said, we can build a church. And all of this is building up in my head, right? I thought, oh yeah, yeah, right? How, how God works and how God puts everybody together to work together, but he only knows the result, right? So I said, Chris, uh, my day off is Tuesday. I would like to, to do this, and this is a beautiful idea. I would like to go to the community on Tuesday. And he said, sure, let's do it right away. Okay, so we went to um, um, Mel Lassman Park. Is that the name, Pastor Ron? Lassman. Square. Okay. We went there, and that was my first day. So Pastor Ron joined us, and it, this has been three Tuesdays, right? This is the first Tuesday, my first time in the community. So Pastor Ron is there, and you know, he's a person of knowledge, yeah? He is a missionary, knowledge and wisdom, and he's very confident, right? We saw it today, we just saw it. And then I have Chris. Chris is a person who can talk about Jesus Christ all day long. He's, he's an evangelist, right? He speaks with boldness and very fluent. And then it's me. Just we decided to go into the community and learn and, and do something, right? In the name of the Lord. Honestly, what I saw was Apostle Peter and Apostle Paul in between. <laughs> I'm working with both of them, <laughs> and, and, and I'm ready to go, right? I'm in good hands. I have people with experience to go there. Okay, so I said, all right, so God, I, I wanna see how Pastor Ron and Chris work with the community, right? I wanna, I wanna learn from them, and maybe at the end I might say a word, something, right? Who knows what's gonna happen? Okay, we go down there, and there is this couple over there, and Chris right away said, okay, okay, there is a couple there, let's talk to them. So we, we got there, and I was like, okay, okay. I was, I, really, I was nervous, right? It's my, my first day. So Chris comes and introduces every single one there, and this is a young man who came to Canada to learn English. His language is Spanish, and Pastor Ron says, all right, Nancy, there you go. <laughs> it's all yours, and I was like, okay, I have to talk, I have to start, okay, my Lord. But I did it. It broke the eyes, and I have a beautiful opportunity to share the, the gospel in, in, in the way that Matthew explained here with him, right? And that was my first experience. But then, Every, what I learned all of these three uh, Tuesdays is that every single situation is so unique and so different when we talk to the community. The next person is sitting there by himself. And uh, as soon as we approached him, there was something a little bit different and weird with this person, right? A person against the word of God. A person that has so much hatred and pain and suffering in his life. And, and he didn't like what he was listening to. And uh, at a personal level, I felt a little bit scared, right? 
but, but I said, oh my Lord. Uh, so I, I was praying, and Pastor Ron and Chris were talking to him and trying to, to, to tell him the gospel that he didn't want to hear. He got up and left. And I was like, wow, amazing. And then we got to a third person. And this third person says, oh, what happened there? So we explained him. And Pastor Ron, this time, he, he was talking to him. And he played the three circles. And he's, he said, this fellow man said, I don't know about Jesus. He never heard about Jesus. And Pastor Ron explained him who Jesus was. And he wanted to hear more and more. And that was amazing. But the end of that day, I said, this is amazing. This is a lot of work that we have to do, right? And, and I was grateful for being there and, and share with the community the gospel of God. OK, second Tuesday. Second Tuesday, um, Chris and I were by ourselves. And we go there. There is a food court in there and lots of tables and a lot of space, right? And Chris said, oh, I would like to, you know, see hundreds of people here, and we are sharing the gospel, and we are teaching the Bible, and, and he has a lot of good ideas, right? And OK, so there is a lady sitting in there, and I, we approach her, I approach her, and she, was gonna, she said at the beginning, she said, no, no. But then she said, um, do you speak Spanish? And I said, yeah, sure, I do. So she started speaking with me in Spanish and said, oh, that's great. No, no, please sit down. What do you want? What do you want to talk about? It? So we talked to her. Uh, she speaks both languages, Spanish and English. So we talked to her in English. And she is a Roman Catholic, right? So I know, I, from my experience, I know what is missing in the Roman Catholic, because I was Roman Catholic. Right? So this lady, number one, I explained her the baptism. And number two, I talked to her about receiving the Holy Spirit. And she was amazed while she was listening. Right? And it, it was great with her. And then uh, with Chris, we approached another man, and he is uh, Muslim. And Chris, he knows how to talk to the Muslim community because he bring uh, the Koran, and he talk about Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. He talk about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And he also acknowledged Muhammad as a prophet, and even John the Baptist as a prophet. And that was great. That was our second Tuesday. Last Tuesday, our third Tuesday, um, we met there. This time, we were uh, Pastor Ron. Um, a young a student that is oh, Pastor Ron is working with, Chris and me. So we were four. We sat down there and said, OK, we're going to go in twos, one in one direction and the other two on another direction, right? Pastor Ron had the opportunity to um, engage three different people. And Chris and I engaged a beautiful mom and a daughter, like a 12-year-old little girl and a mom. And as soon as we start talking to her, she said she was interested in God as a different level, as a personal level. She heard Chris and I talking about the relationship with God. And she couldn't believe that we can talk to God, right? And that we listen to God. And we take action. And she was like, oh, tell me, tell me more. What, what did you hear? How do you hear God? So she asked my experience, and she asked Chris for his experience. And, and we have an amazing conversation. So at this time, Chris and I worked together, right? Um, and it's, 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 it's a work in harmony. Like God teaches us to be, right? In, to work in harmony, right? So. When we finish, this mom says, could you please pray for us? And that was beautiful. At, at, at one moment, 
we were able to be disconnected from the real world and we start praying and we saw beauty and we saw God and we saw creation. And, and there was the most beautiful picture that we had, Chris and I. At, at, when we finished, we said, what did just happen? Because his feelings and my feelings were the same, right? So bringing the gospel of God to people that don't know God or don't know Jesus or don't know the Holy Spirit is amazing, it's beautiful. And I invite you, if you want, to do it. It's, it's, it's great because um, this desire that Chris has to bring hundreds of people to the food court there is the same desire that Pastor Ron and I have, right? And 2,000 years ago, that's what Jesus Christ said, go in twos and spread the gospel. So that's what we're doing. Thank you.